Good evening, everyone. I'm Nathan, here with my wonderful wife, Laura. Hello. And we're here to do a review of the classic, iconic board game, Jumanji. A game for those who seek to find a way to leave their world behind. Ooh. So if anyone doesn't know, it's based on the, the mid to late 90s movie with Robin Williams, where some people find a board game and... They find Jumanji. They find Jumanji, and anything that they roll and appears in the game happens in real life. Yes. So there's rhinoceroses and um, monkeys and a hunter and all sorts of things Floods that come out of things. the board game. Uh, so this is not one of the re-releases of the game. This one is from 1995. There are a few, I think, re-releases at Quite this a few. Point. You've got a mini one, a regular one. you got like a special wooden one, an electronic one. They went all out in the last sort of five years, I reckon. When they did like those newer Jumanji movies was kind of when they started yeah. doing all of that. But yeah, this, this is the 90s one. Um, this is the only one we currently have. Maybe we'll pick up another one at another point. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, anyway, um... Yeah, I really like the look of this and, and all that. Mm -hmm. Play-wise, yeah. It's okay, but... Yeah, it's okay, but we'll get to that soon. Um, it's, it's massive. It's not as good as what it would be like if it was real. No. Obviously. <laughs> but, um, no, let's open up. Yeah. We'll open up the massive, massive board. It is. So, we're not going to be able to show the whole board. We're going to have to kind of move it across the screen to show you <coughs> because it is larger than the average. So, we've got the instructions, which will have scans up below. Yeah, the, there's a link to um, kind of a, a database of all of our instruction manuals. This will be in there. And if I feel like it, I may or may not try and scan like the quick start, so a game at a glance. It's just a bit of card what comes in the box. Yep. Um, I mean, really, I would recommend reading the full instructions anyway if you've never played it, but I suppose if you're coming back to it after a while, that would be a good little refresher. Uh, we have a decoder, which we'll get to, mm -hmm. and we just have a, a cute little party box. Th that did not come with it. No. That's just our copy happen to... With all the pieces. <laughs> uh, should we discuss the piece of the board first? Uh, let's show the board. I think so. Then get a better understanding of how it all sort of fits together. Let's get that box out all of there right. because we're going to need the space. <laughs> let's start from... We'll have a we'll have start from that side that you've got there. Alright. Watch out. And Jumanji. I'm going to knock over my drink over here. A game <clears> for <throat> those who seek to find a way to leave their world behind. Adventurers beware, do not begin unless you intend to finish. Ooh. So, um, this is just really, this side of the board, aside from being the draw and discard pile, is, is just that. It's just, it's really good aesthetics, <laughs> this board. It is, it is. They've tried their best to make it look good. Um, so this is one of the, like, flaps. <laughs> Yeah. Was that what you call it? I don't know. Folds, what you call flaps, it. Yeah. bends. Uh, so we come into this is the actual kind of gameplay so area. As you can see, it's not quite fitting, but they've no. each got the same amount of space as each color. They're just sort of intertwined like they are in the movie. Yep. Um, so blue, yellow, um, kind of a ready, ready browny orange, orange yep. green, and yellow. Yep. Um, so four players, uh, two to four. You don't have to have three or four. It's, you know, up to it, you, of it's, course. As per usual with a lot of games, it's much more enjoyable with more people. Definitely. Although this one can be a little bit trickier with more people. And we'll yeah. get to why in a minute. Uh, so our decoder is just a thin plastic and this part is all cardboard and needs to be assembled if you were buying it like yes. new. So I think that's a sticker here, the Jumanji yep. the game. And then this is sort of stuck on the little decoder. Yep. Um, you kind of have to be careful. This is flimsy. It, there's nothing sturdy about it. The board's fine, but the board is sturdy, the pieces are sturdy, it's just, sort of just the decoder, which is kind of an issue, because um, if you did find this game and this part was damaged or missing because it was broken... It's still playable, but it makes it ten times as difficult, which you'll more. show in a moment, yeah. Yeah. Alright, so that there's slots up through the bottom. Um, each of the colours have their own start space in the corner. And the associated pawn playing piece of the same colour. We'll show those in a minute. And then over this side we have the rhino up the top. Now, what is this called? It's the doomsday grid. So basically, for area. every challenge you um, fail, fail in the game, which mm -hmm. we'll get to, um, that card goes here. And if you fill up all these cards, then everyone loses if once this card is placed here. Yeah, so it kind of makes it sound like then this is a cooperative game, which it is a little bit, because obviously, like you said, everybody can lose, or you can have a winner. Yeah, so you definitely want to be helping out your people if you can. A little bit. A but little you can bit. Also, you also want to slow down the other players, so it's a bit yeah, of a balance. The first person to get to the middle and, and shout, Jamanji wins. Yes. So you grab your piece. I wonder so. if I can actually get it a little higher. <laughs> There we go. Get as much in as we can. Um, so we have little wooden pieces. Again, everything is a lot sturdier than that decoder in the middle. 
um, little wooden pieces. Nothing spectacular. They're, they're not the same shape as in the movie, which no, I like always little, thought was weird. Like little figureheads in the movie. Little animal sort of figures, yeah. Um, but these are like nicely carved. They are. I'm not sure if it's going to focus. Nothing there. wrong with the quality. Just interesting that they didn't go for that design element that would have tied it into the movie a little bit better. So you sort of start there. Yep, so they would all go in their respective corners. I can't reach that one though, sorry. There we go. <laughs> you do that. There is a little hourglass timer. Which lasts roughly eight seconds according to the manual. Is yes. how much sand you've got there. Mm -hmm. We then have a little plastic rhino piece. Um, again, he, he's quite nice. He's solid plastic. He's got a lot of nice detail. Nice texture and things. Yep. He starts over here on, on the, the rhino. rhino face. Wow. What a surprise. Um, then we have our moving die. So it goes up to eight. Yep. It's an eight sided die. Each player gets one of these. I think it's a rescue well. die they're called. Yes, the rescue dice. And each rescue die actually has one different symbol on each. There's a saber, a door, a die, a tennis racket, a raft, a rope, an axe, and a time glass. An hourglass. An hourglass. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in a three or more player game, the hourglass counts as a wild. The only difference between a two-player game and a three-player game is in a two-player game, the hourglass is not a while and just is a nothing roll. You just don't Which will explain it. how it sort of functions shortly. So each player gets their own one of those rescue dice. So you get one, I get one. You don't move them around, you just have one because, I mean, you use them every single turn in the game, so you wouldn't want to have to be passing them around. No. It wouldn't work. So if you've only got two players, each player takes a rescue dice and the other two dice just go away. Yep. And the last thing we have is our Jumanji card. So the back just says Jumanji with all their, you know, copyright sort of info. And then this side has a little image at the bottom and then some coded text at so, the top. I'm not sure if the viewfinder or the camera is picking it up, but so it's all red and there's also sort of some blue looks like text there, mm -hmm. but the blue is only visible once you put it underneath the red decoder. So let me just yes. take the decoder out so we can actually sort of yeah, have so a it up. So there we go. So on your turn, you roll the number die and then move on the board. If you get a blank space, which is the majority of the spaces, you take one of the Jumanji cards. The draw. Are, they, are they disaster cards? They've got a specific name. Hang on. Uh, danger cards. Danger cards. They slide from the bottom up so that the little code area can be seen through this. I don't think the camera is picking it up particularly well, unfortunately. So basically here, you can't really read it. And when I hear it says, don't stop the game, you realize, or one of you may vaporize. And then it will have a symbol. So I don't know whether you can see this or not. We for forgive us if you can't. There is a die symbol here that matches. One of the sides on the rescue the die. Last one I turned to, which matches this. And a number in the top right hand corner. So say it was my turn. I rolled and I landed on one of those blank spaces. I pop my card in there. I have to rescue you. You don't rescue yourself. Yeah, so I might be vaporized. So I need because it's a two player at the moment, just Nathan to rescue me. If it was a four player, everybody has to rescue me. And which means, so let's just do the two player and we'll just briefly explain well, how it works. Well, it's the same, yeah. whether it's two, three or four. I don't do anything aside from watch the timer and say when the timer is up and when it's starting so everyone knows when to go. So I basically have about eight seconds to roll this die as much as I can to try and match that symbol there. Yes, so I would go, all right, everybody has their, you know, rescue dice. Yes, all Here's right. It. One, Ready, two, three. Set, go. Oh, and that's all. I keep an eye on this. Everybody keeps rolling. There we go. Nathan got it. So I'll go, okay, great. You, you've won if it was, you've rescued me if it was just two players. If it's three or four, those other players also have to roll the correct symbol in that time frame. Yes. So if Nathan gets it, but player three doesn't, player four does, I did not get rescued. Which means the this particular card goes onto the uh, disaster sort of space over here. It's, it's just off camera. But I'll just put it in this column. Yep. You do start in the other column. Yeah, so you would fill that there. And unfortunately, you don't move or anything. I move backwards. The so, space, the number on the card. So this one was three. So I go backwards, one, two, three. Um, you can go all the way back to start. You can't move backwards beyond the start. If I had rescued you and all the other plays, if they were, had rescued you, this particular card then goes in the discard pile. Yep, so if everyone who was playing, aside from me, the person who needed rescue and gets that symbol, that's yes. when we're successful. And then um, everyone moves the amount of spaces as dictated by the card. In this case, it would be three, so we all move okay, three. One, two, three, great. Whatever you then move forward onto, you do not play that anything for that space. You just stay where no. you are. 
Um, the other spaces on the board are the Rhino space and then the Wait for Five or Eight spaces. So the Rhino space uh, effectively acts like, um, what was it in the White Unicorn, the Goblin or something? Oh uh, yeah, a little bit. It, it, it's blocks. a blockade, so then... So if I landed on the White Unicorn, the white, you know you've got me saying White Unicorn, the um, Rhinoceros, <laughs> I take the piece and that goes in front of one of my opponents. So say, obviously I'm only here, so you'd go right here. This piece follows you. So for instance, if I happen to go back, the Rhino would go there and I cannot move forward until I roll, I think it's an even number or... An even number. Yeah. So if you roll an even number, um, or like on Nathan's next turn, he gets that, then he can put the Rhino back on his home base up here on the corner. Uh, if he rolls an odd number, then the Rhino stays there. And instead of moving, you have to do whatever the space you're on is. So if I blocked him here and he's stuck on just a blank space, Oh, he's rolled an odd number, oh no. Then I'd pick up a draw card and do the challenges per normal. Play as normal, yeah. And I also can't move forward. If I the challenge is successful, I still can't move forward. No, but everybody else still can. Yes. Um, if you're sent backwards because uh, you lost the challenge and so you had to move back three. The rhino follows you. He goes for yep. you, yeah. Uh, so it's really important to get an even number to get rid of the rhino. Uh, so that that's the way to sabotage <coughs> one of the other players because even though you kind of want to work together, you're rescuing everybody, um, you, you still want to be the first person to get to the middle of the board, so. So yeah. the other space is the wait for five or eight. So say I was unlucky and land on here, then Laura would be like, great, I'll have my turn. You need to roll. Not my turn. Not my turn, sorry. Just... This is, yeah, so you'd have you'd roll. Mm -hmm. Get a five or eight, damn. You didn't get it, I move back one. You now roll again. No, oh, move back one, didn't get it. Move back one. So you can go back an awfully long way until I roll. A five or an eight. A five or an eight. As, oh, there you go. Finally got one for you. Um, yeah, so if it's, if it's the, the five or eight is rolled, then you're safe. If it's not rolled, um, like you said, you go back. Um, if you go back to the start, you obviously don't. You just, that's it. You, it's the, you just over. You don't keep next, going. Next person's turn. Yep. So that's a very unfortunate space because you can go back a lot. Mm -hmm. um, the only other unusual thing um, in this game is these spaces here. So when you're inside this circle, it says in the jungle, you must stay until disasters roll away. So this, this is the, the particular one which can basically uh, ruin your game if you get bad luck straight away. So yep. someone lands on there. As per usual, a challenge card is yep, drawn, so a danger card, you put it in there, this one says raft, uh, like oh. a great white shark, down the Nile, beware the 25 foot crocodile. Yes, so if that happens and we're in here, uh, say it was my turn, I still have to be the timekeeper, however, I'm also going to roll my rescue dice along with every single other player. And we all have to complete the challenge and, and everyone rescue. has to get the raft before the time is up. If that doesn't happen, this card then goes onto the disaster sort of spaces. Doomsday grid. Doomsday, and then another challenge is drawn. Then I take another one if it's still my turn. Or if it was Nathan who landed, he's the one who always takes the card. So then say that one was failed, guess what? It goes over there as well. So you can you have to pass one to be able to move forward. Um, so it's still my turn. And you could go through every card and completely fill up the doomsday section. We've not had that happen. Usually you sort of eventually win one. But we have only played with two players before. And obviously if you have four players playing with four players trying to get the same symbol. Makes it a bit harder. Which is why they have the hourglass can be a wild. Whereas in the two player game you don't have that. You have to get the symbol. Because so. usually you only have, you only have one player gets to get one symbol. So yeah. uh, And obviously if this is completed, great. Everyone moves ahead. The five, five spaces. was, yep, so I'd go one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm out of that circle. Um, but yeah, you obviously have to get rid of a disaster first. Uh, it also, I think, specifies you can't be in the same space as another player, but there's only four spaces on the entire board that that can happen. Yeah, which is these like crossover spaces where the paths cross. The chances that you're going to be there and then someone's going to land on you are, are slim to none. I believe it says you have to go ahead one space. Yes. Yeah. Ahead of that person. Um, but again, we, we've never had it happen. Um, that's it. You just keep moving until you make it to the center. You do have to get in here by exact count. Yes. That can either be from your own roll of the dice 
or by moving forward because of one of the danger cards, like with the, the number. So you say Laura's here and she rolls a five, one, two, three, well, that's too much. Then Laura would then action a blank space. Yep, which so means... I just stay where I am and I have to play that space again. Um, and then yeah, you get in the middle and then... You... Jumanji! If two people get to the middle at once, the first person to yell Jumanji wins. Yes, so um, that can happen. It can be like a tie to both move there on the same turn if you're moving via one of these cards and you are the same distance away. So it says to pay attention to whoever is shouting it out first. Yeah. So. Um, it's neat. I like the aesthetics. It's reasonable mechanics. Um, a lot of luck though, obviously. Yeah, because it's all dice based. Um, it, and it can take a while to get what you need from <laughs> rolling. Um, which again, I think would be harder if you were playing with four people. I just, I don't know. I, 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 I don't think it's too bad with two players. I think it'd be no. too long if you added more players. But... That, that's just my thoughts. I'd be interested to know if all the re-releases are basically the same or if they've mm. fixed any issues or if there's more skill based or decisions because here you're all dice you move forward and that's and it's all based on luck. Yeah, dice so rolls, yeah. Uh, let us know if you've played any of the newer ones, electronic, deluxe, wooden, whatever else, the mini one, travel. Mm -hmm. um, now I know you probably can't see these but I thought I'd just show some more of the images. As per usual the artwork's really nice for sort of a, a mid-90s sort of Milton Bradley game. Yeah some really cool ones in there. Um, some of them are directly from the movie. Like the pelican or bird well. that steals the board or the flood. I think there's some vines in there. The stampede I think. So it has like the same text as what they read out the in the hunter. game as the hunter. So that one says a hunter from the darkest wild makes you feel just like a child. Which I think is almost identical to what it says in the movie. That's why I picked that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, some of them, though, are not ones from the movie. Obviously, there's more here than what occurs in it. So, yeah. If you enjoyed watching this video, give us a thumbs up. Uh, let us know in the comments down below the answer to Nathan's question about, about the different all versions. The different versions. Mm -hmm. Or if you played Zathura, the sequel to Jumanji, well, the movie, and the board game, not, which they also made for the movie, which is kind of the sequel to Jumanji. Not really the sequel. Not really, but kind of. <laughs> it gets bundled with it in like yeah. DVDs, though. Hit that subscribe button and check back soon. We have videos every single Tuesday. Sounds good. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.